What up, y'all? This is your boy, Mr. Dan Calvary Mellon, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report for Tuesday, August 5th, 2014, delivering some of the major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook or Twitter, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, and on Twitter at the Enter Report. Nicole Murphy, the ex-fiance of NFL legend and host of Live with Kelly and Michael Michael Strahan decided to tell the world she had broken up with him right when he was entering into the Pro Football Hall of Fame because that's when she confirmed he was unfaithful. A source close to the couple told TMZ Nicole first got win Michael might be dating another woman in early July and started investigating the way scorned women do. TMZ told she was finally convinced it was true on Friday and immediately decided to go public. The source did not know the nature of Nicole's proof TMZ told Nicole insisting her timing wasn't out of revenge, rather a total coincidence because that's what she knew for sure. It just happened to come precisely when Michael was getting the greatest honor of his career, being inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Other sources told TMZ Nicole and Michael had been broken up for several weeks, and in fact, their bicoastal relationship had been on and off for almost two years, once Michael took the live gig. Ultimately, this may come down to that old friends theory. But TMZ told Nicole definitely did not think they were on a break. Representatives for both Michael Strahan and Nicole Murphy have not responded to calls for comments. In a related story, Nicole Murphy had a secret romantic fling in the Caribbean with former NBA star Jim Jackson in early July, the exact same time she said she suspected Michael Strahan of cheating on her. TMZ obtained photos of Nicole and Jim at the El- at the Dorado Beach Ritz-Carlton in Puerto Rico, where they stayed from July 7th through July 10th. The pictures showed them in the cabana on the beach, and they got very snuggly. People at the hotel told TMZ they were hugging, kissing, definitely affectionate. Sources closest to the ex told TMZ Nicole had gone to Puerto Rico with some girlfriends and just happened to run into Jim, an old friend. And even though they hung out, it was nothing serious. TMZ told Michael News Nicole was taking a trip with her girlfriends but was not aware anything went on with Jackson. TMZ told Nicole now she says she and Michael were on a break when she hooked up with when she hooked up with Jackson, but that she did not feel the relationship was over. Still, it's interesting she's accusing Michael of cheating, but she was clearly playing the field as well. The LAPD are currently investigating a violent studio catfight involving members of the female group Danity Kane. Danity Kane recording Shesh erupted in violence Monday and they actually needed a first aid kit. Uh, TMZ told bandmates Don Richards and Aubrey O'Day got physical during a disagreement at an L.A. studio on Monday, resulting in Don slugging Aubrey in the head with a closed fist. Uh, Danny Kane's star member Shannon Bex was also there and tried unsuccessfully to break up the fight. This isn't the first time DK has had issues. The original five members disbanded in 2009, with four of them reuniting last year. Andrea Fimbres quickly dropped out, leaving the remaining three. Aubrey filed a battery report. Cops are investigating. NBC's primetime special of Miley Cyrus Bangers Tour has the FCC hop on the tail of the peacock. The show, which aired July 6, has triggered a slew of complaints with viewers gripping the network allowed obscenity on the air. TMZ has obtained some of the complaints targeting stripper costumes and Miley rolling around in the bed with half-naked men and women. The stunt that got a bunch of complaints Molly grinding against a, con, a, cust, a costume Abe Lincoln. The, a, the FCC is investigating whether the content violated its rules against broadcasting, sexual, or extratory activity. Worst case scenario, NBC could be fined. The view is that Sherry Shepard is now a mom for the second time, if she wants to be, because seems he's learned her surrogate has given birth. Um, surrogate, we're told the baby boy was born on Tuesday in Pennsylvania. TMZ broke the story. Sherry has disavowed maternity, claiming her estranged husband, Lamar Sally, defraud her when she signed the surrogate documents. She believes his intent all along was to divorce her and then go for child support. TMZ knows Lamar intends to raise the child himself, but he will still ask a judge to order Sherry to pay support. Um, TMZ also was told that Sherry was not present. Lamar was, and sources close to him say he is excited to be a new dad and for the future ahead. James Safechuck 
claims in his lawsuit against the Michael Jackson estate, the singer started abusing him when he was 10 years old when he traveled with Michael to Paris for the Bad Tour in 1998. He also claims Michael Jackson had code words and signals that he used when James was a boy. He allegedly molested to describe various sex acts, including duck butter. In new court documents obtained by TMZ, Save Chuck says Michael taught him to use code words referring to his erection as bright light brick city and calling semen duck butter. Save Chuck claims Jackson also used secret signals when they would hold hands. Michael would scratch the inside of James' hand with a finger to show he wanted to have sex. Save Chuck says Michael Jackson wanted a full-blown relationship with him to the point he performed a secret wedding ceremony with the boy with a wedding ring and a marriage certificate. He also describes how Michael would take him to various homes, including a palace called the Hideout in Century City, where they would drink sweet pink wine and watch porn, including movies of children masturbating. Save Chuck says at one point he questioned his own sexuality because he also had a crush on Cheryl Crow, who was one of Jackson's backup singers. He says Michael found out and became jealous, showing him unflattering pics of Crow without makeup. Save Chuck says the abuse stopped entirely when he reached puberty. Howard Weitzman, attorney for the Michael Jackson estate, told TMZ the whole lawsuit should be scrapped because it was filed more than 20 years ago after the incident supposedly happened, and says Save Chuck has given sworn testimony that Michael never did anything inappropriate to him. Marilyn Burns, who gained fame as the heroine in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre horror film, has died. The rap has confirmed she was found dead in her home by a family member in Houston. A cause of death has not been released. Her talent manager, Chris Rowe, said in a statement, It is with sadness that I can officially confirm that actress Marilyn Burns passed away earlier today. She was found unresponsive by a family member this morning in her Houston, Texas area home. Her family asked for privacy at this time. Further details will be released later. After the release of the 1974 cult classic, Burns gained fame when her character Sally became the only lone survival after the bloody rampage of Leatherface. It was her first lead role. Coming full circle, Burns made a cameo appearance in the seventh and latest chapter in the Leatherface Saga, 2013's Texas Chainsaw 3D. It was her third Texas Chainsaw appearance and one of her final film roles. She also appeared in the 2014 horror film The Sacrament. Burns expressed an interest in the arts at a young age, participating in school theatrical productions. After high school, she made her first film appearance in Robert Altman's Brewster McLeod while attending college. She graduated from the University of Texas in Austin with a degree in drama in 1971. She portrayed Linda Caspian, who traded her testimony against Charles Manson and his family for immunity in the television series, miniseries, Held Her Skelter, in 1976. Burns made several other notable appearances through her long career as an actress with the heavy emphasis on horror, but none would have the cultural impact of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. She was 64 years old. Well, the Goldberg tore apart Donald Trump in the most respectful way possible on Monday's episode of The View when discussing his tweets about two Americans who contracted the Ebola virus while treating an outbreak in West Africa. Goldberg, Goldberg said, I don't really know how to respond to it in a polite way. I like Donald. I try to be respectful, but this was an idiotic comment. Trump took to Twitter on Friday to protest the return of Dr. Kent Brantley and Nancy Right bowl to the United States when they are receiving treatment for the deadly virus at Emory University Hospital. Trump tweeted, Stop the Ebola patients from entering the U.S. Treat them at the highest level over there. The United States has enough problems. The U.S. cannot allow Ebola, Ebola infected people back. People that go to faraway places to help out are great, but must suffer the consequences. Goldberg says she understands why Trump would be fearful of the virus hitting American soil, but stressed that it doesn't carry in the wind and can only spread through bodily fluids. Uh, Goldberg said, I'm not defending him, but he is also a friend of mine, so I don't want to be disrespectful to him, but that was a stupid comment. Do your homework, Donald. Just do your homework. Actor James Corden is taking over for Craig Ferguson as the host of The Late Late Show on CBS. An individual knowledge of the situation has told the rap. A representative for Corden did not immediately respond to requests for comment, while CBS couldn't confirm at that time. Corden said stars in Disney's Into the Woods and can currently be seen alongside Carrot Knightley and Bean again. He also plays Paul Potts in the Weinstein Company's One Chance. He's represented by CAA. Ferguson, who's hosted The Late Late Show since 2005, announced that he would be departing the series in April, noting that he exit at the end of this year. 
The host has vagued about his future plans, saying, and then I'll do something else. Probably I'm thinking carpentry. Ferguson's decision to exit the series came after late show's host David Letterman's announcement that he would be retiring. While some regarded Ferguson as a possible heir to Letterman's hosting chair, Colbert Report host Stephen Colbert eventually landed the gig instead. A number of names were thrown around as possible re replacements for Ferguson, including community star Joe McHale and Neil Patrick Harris, who starred in CBS's hit, hit sitcom How I Met Your Mother, which wrapped this year. While Corden may not be a household name in the U.S., he's boasted a sizable social media presence with more than 4 million Twitter followers, which could bring a modern edge to the show, which airs at 12.35 a.m. Legendary actor, producer, and director Robert Redford is once again taking on the government, and this time it's financial. Redford has filed a lawsuit against the New York State Department of Taxation and Finance and the department's commissioner, Thomas H. Mattox, saying he's being unfairly taxed over revenues from the sales of the Sundance Channel. The suit filed in New York Supreme Court claims that the state hit him with a bill of $845,000 in taxes and $720,000 $3,000 in interest over the sales, money the actor contends he owe. He didn't. He doesn't owe. The lawsuit says that Redford, a Utah resident, sold off a portion of the interest in the Sundance Channel in 2005. Redford claims that his take from the sale was uh, included in the income tax return plaintiff filed with his home state of Utah and was fully taxed by that state. However, the suit goes on to say that New York's tax department treated the money as New York source income, a decision that Redford obviously disagrees with. The lawsuit re reads, Redford's Sundance TV Inc. and plaintiffs determined that the game was non-New York source income and reported it as such on their New York state tax returns. It also further says, plaintiff did not use his ownership interest in Sundance TV Inc., nor did he use his indirect ownership in limited or channel in any trade or business carried on by him in New York. Further, plaintiff did not have any property, payroll, or receipts located in or deemed um, attributable to the, the conduct of a trade or business in New York. Redford is asking for a judgment that he doesn't owe New York the taxes and interest plus attorney fees and costs. Cheryl Boone Isaacs has been re-elected to a second term as the president of the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts, and Science. The Academy announced on Tuesday night. Isaac, a member of the America Academy of the Motion Pictures, Arts, and Sciences Boards of Governors representing the Public Relations Branch of the Academy, was elected by the 51 governors at their monthly meeting. Her election was first announced on the Academy's official Twitter account. The veteran pub publicity and marketing executive was re-elected to her seat on the board last month, making her eligible for another term as president. Governors serve three-year terms, while the Academy president can serve four consecutive one-year terms before he or she must leave office. Isaacs is the third woman to serve as Academy president and the first African-American to occupy the position. She is one of 14 women on the board and is the only person of color. CBS is hit. The Big Bang Theory is going back into production Wednesday after a week-long delay because of contract negotiations with the show's star. Uh, Warner Bros. TV said in a statement, Tuesday production on season 8 of The Big Bang Theory will begin Wednesday, August 6, with contract negotiations now having been concluded. The announcement was expected after word came Monday that stars Jim Parsons, Johnny Galecki, and Kaylee Kuko had signed hugely lucrative new three-year deals. All three will receive about $1 million per episode, up from $350,000 per episode, a person familiar with the negotiations told The Rap. That left co-stars Simon Helberg and Kunal Nayar to hammer out their own deals for the series, which has been renewed through 2017 by CBS. The deals for Parsons, Galecki, and Kuko are worth an estimate $90 million for each of the stars over the three seasons. The deals also left open the possibility for an 11th season. Production on the upcoming season, scheduled to premiere September 22nd, has been scheduled to begin last Wednesday. Although they have been on hiatus since 2012, the, ine the inevitable is now confirmed. The folk pop duo, the Civil Wars, are no more. The folk duo broke the news Tuesday via press release along with quotes from band members Joy Williams and John Paul White. Additionally, the duo shared one final song, a cover of You Are My Sunshine, which has been a B-side to the band's Barton Hollow limited edition vinyl. It's available for download on their website. Band member Joy Williams said, I am sad and disappointed by the ending of this duo, to say the very least. 
JP is a tremendous musician, and I will always be grateful for the music we were able to create together. I sincerely hope that You Are My Sunshine will be accepted as a token of my gratitude for every single person that has supported our duo throughout the years. I'm so thankful, and my heart is full looking ahead. I'm excited to share the music that I am writing and recording in the midst of this difficult transition. I love being back in the studio and have missed performing live. I look forward to seeing you soon. And band member John Paul White added, I would like to express sincere thanks to all who were a part of the arc of the Civil Wars from the beginning to the end and all points in between. My deep appreciation goes out to all who have supported, um, disseminated, and enjoyed the music. Whatever shape or form the next chapter ta takes, thanks for being a part of this one. Despite not touring behind it, the Civil War self-titled 2013 album debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 with 116,000 copies moved in its first week according to Nielsen's sound scan. The band had been on hiatus since November 2012 over internal discord and irreconcilable differences on ambition. Williams conducted press for the self-titled release while White remained silent. In their brief history, their debut LP, Barton Howard, dropped in 2011. The Civil Wars won an impressive four Grammys. They received a good deal of crossover notoriety from their Taylor Swift collaboration, Safe and Sound, which appeared on 2011's The Hunger Games, songs from District 12 and beyond. Judging from their statements, it seems at least Williams will continue to record, release, and perform music. In the September issue of Glamour magazine, actress Olivia Wilde, who welcomed baby Otis with fiancé actor-comedian Jason Tudekis in uh, April, talks about her experience breastfeeding her four-month-old. Accompanying the interview is a stunning image of her nursing him. Wilde said, being shy with Otis is so perfect because any portrait of me right now isn't complete without my identity as a mother being a part of that. Breastfeeding is the most natural thing. I don't know. Now it feels like Otis should always be on my breast. The actors continued by saying it felt like we were capturing that multifaceted woman we've been discussing that we know we can be. You can be someone who is at once maternal and professional and sexy and self-possessed, but I mean, I certainly don't really look like that when I'm typically breastfeeding, and there's usually a diaper involved. Wilde's covered debuts during World Breastfeeding Week, an annual celebration promoting breastfeeding awareness worldwide. The actress joins other celebrities like uh, rocker Alanis Morissette, who has also shared photos in order to normalize the sight of breastfeeding and show support for other nursing mothers. And finally, thanks to NBC's Comedy Parks and Recreations, we, uh, we already know Chris Pratt's got a knack for belting and passionate Dave Matthews uh, ballads about falling to pits and deceased many horses. But the actor proved he's no one-trick pony during an interview with DJ Who Kid on his radio show, Hollywood Shuffle. Pratt appeared to promote his new Marvel blockbuster Guardians of the Galaxy, where when the subject turned to his taste in music, the actor spoke about his love of hip-hop, recalling the dawn of Eminem's career and comparing his relationship with Dr. Dre's 2001 to the mixtape his Guardians character Peter Quill listens to throughout the movie. And here's an audio clip of him doing a flawless, pitch, and rhythmically perfect a cappella version of Dr. Dre's Eminem's classic collaboration, Forget About Dre. What hip hop artists do you blast off, or, or, or are you into EDM and stuff like that? You, you like all that jumping and wiggling, the white people dance shit, or oh yeah, I'm yeah, oh yeah, big time into <laughs> the white people dance shit. Can't you tell? Um, you know, I, you know when 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 I remember when Eminem first came out with his album in Chronic 2001. Around that time came oh, out. Oh wow, that was that was kind of like my Peter Quill mix. I listened to that. Me and my friend lived in a van in Maui and we listen to that and smoke weed every day get the fuck out every of here every day Chris. I, I know every every, week, every I'm about to word. I'm about to call Marshall <laughs> let's Dude, go I tell you what I know every word to, to that album <laughs> I, you, prove it prove it what do you want me to say Nowadays, everybody want to talk. They got something to say, but nothing comes out when they move the lips. Just a bunch of chipper bridge. Motherfuckers act that they forgot about Dre. So what do you say to somebody you hate? What? Anyone trying to make trouble you bake? Want to resolve things with the buddy you bake? We'll just study your tape of N.W.A. Shut up, uh, One day, I was walking by with the walk for now. When I caught a guy giving a knock or not, strangling him off with the pocket knot. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't give a fuck if it's dark or not. Harder than me trying to talk and dodge, but I'm drunk as fuck. Right next to a humongous truck in a two car garage. Yeah. Walking out with two broken legs, trying to walk it off. Ooh, well, fuck ooh. you too, bitch. Call the cops. I'm gonna kill you when them loud ass motherfucking barking dogs. Oh, and when wow. the dog came out, you Dre stood next to a burned down house with a can for the gas and a hand for the matches. It still weren't found out right here, cause I hear on out. It's the chronic too. Start today, tomorrow's a new. And I'm still local enough to choke you to death with the Tarleton chew. Chicka, 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 slim shady. I hotter than a set of twin babies. And Mercedes Benz with the windows up to the temporals up to the mid 80s i call them men ladies side doc but i've been crazy Woo. it's okay go to him Haley. <laughs> yeah. yo he did it with him yo that, yo shut up Reed. He just told you to shut up. and that is your entertainment report for tuesday august 5th 2014 uh this is your host mr downtown ray mel i'll be back tomorrow to learn some of the major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment you can follow the show on facebook or on twitter facebook.com slash the entertainment report with ray mellow that's r-a-y-m-e-l-o or on Twitter at the Enter Report. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.